me go through an example of how the limits of size and form interact with each other. We've seen that if only the limits, are si limits of size are specified, the limits of size control the actual size and the form. This isn't always what we want. It's not always the most efficient way to produce things. So let's make a surface plate, right? Say so we're gonna make it, I don't know, 12 inches by 12 inches by two inches thick out of cast iron. It's very important that one side of the surface plate be very, very flat. So let's say, let's say plus or minus one dowel, just for fun. So this surface plate that I've drawn can have a maximum deviation in form of two thousandths. So if it comes in at its LMC at any local cross sections, those areas can be undersized and it'll be okay. But the box, this, would have to fit in a perfect form boundary that's 2.000, 2.001. It cannot be bigger than that, and it has to meet that form. So you can test this by just making something uh, this size, making sure it will fit, and then making sure none of the points on it are less than the LMC, which would be 1.999. Small tolerances and doable. We could save some money if we could separate the form from the size because as it stands right now, we're controlling the form at the top and the form at the bottom when we really don't need to. This thing, the bottom of a surface plate could be whatever. We're gonna uh, use adjusting screws to get it left. So this Controlling things with just a limit of size is gonna end up being more expensive to get what you want. What we're gonna do is invoke a geometric tolerance, which we're gonna talk more about. The simplest one is flatness. Flatness is, flatness is a condition of a surface or derived median plane having all elements in one plane. Flatness can only apply to one feature at a time. So what we can do is apply a flatness tolerance to this surface to get that specific form that we want from the top. And then we can release this bottom surface to be whatever it needs to be. So let's do that. I made some changes. I added a flatness tolerance. The way this is checked is you'll take this surface and run an indicator over it. You can prop this up or move it around any way you want because this bottom part has nothing to do with that top part. The flatness only applies to this top surface. So you position it however you need to, run an indicator over it. As long as the indicator drop isn't more than one dowel, that surface would be good. Because we've controlled the form on the surface we care about, we can make this tolerance bigger for the overall thickness, something we don't care as much about. This goes into the function of the part. And if we can design around the function, the part will be cheaper and it'll work better. What this thing could end up looking like, we'll have a perfect surface up top. The bottom can be all screwed up, but that's okay because we only care about the top. That's just one example of how GD&T can save us time and money if we understand how to use it.